Welcome back, Captains. This is Admiral Yadis Defark with Starfleet Special Command. I'm here today with video 8 in our shipbuild series, my fleet battlecruiser, the USS Vengeance. As always, I'll be breaking this video down into 8 parts, so let's get started. Alright, guys, first we'll go over the shipbuild itself. Let's start with the four weapons. Uh, pretty much all the beams on the ship, well, they all are advanced fleet phaser beam arrays, damage times 2, accuracy times 2. If y'all have watched a couple of my other videos, these are the same beams. As any of you that know me, I'm pretty much a cannon type player. I try to keep to the, you know, if it's a fed ship, I keep phasers on it. If it's ROM, then I go plasma and so forth. But like I said, I'm running 4-4 four, four and 2 aft, so for a total of 6. And then up front, I've got the wide angle quantum torpedo launcher. Um, that's actually off the Regent. Uh, talk about these weapons real quick. Um, I actually tried this as an all beam build. What I noticed with the power levels, um, adding that seventh beam, um, for some reason on this ship hits really hard. Um, on the other ships, like my region, it really didn't seem to matter that much, but I actually noticed a DPS loss with it. I guess it just depends on you know, how you got your ship set up and captain skills and all your um, different types of weapons and things like that that could make a difference for that. But adding that torp in there actually brought the DPS uh, back up. It actually works pretty good when you come in and um, you go into like on uh, infected conduit. You go into a area where there's a lot of spheres. Um, you can hit beam fire at will. It starts hitting on those, drops their shields pretty quick, and then the quantum torpedoes uh, and torpedo spread comes in and pretty much takes care of the, the spheres real quick. So uh, from here, we'll go on to the uh, three-piece set, uh, the simulated deflector array, simulated subtranswarp engines and of course the assimilated regenerative shield array. Um, I've tried a couple different ship three-piece sets on here. Um, I've tried the Mako, I've tried the adapted Mako, I've tried mixing the couple and for some reason this ship it pretty much is a beefy escort. That's about the way I've come to um, call it. It resembles an escort in a lot of ways. In some ways it resembles a cruiser. It seems like a mix between the two but for some reason it really liked this Borg set. The other sets it really didn't it seems like kind of squishy on those. So, but the a lot of this stuff right here comes in handy, really good. Um, the autonomous regeneration sequencer um, that helps out a lot. It pops up rather regularly and saves you quite a bit. And the multi regenerative shield array it actually pops up a lot. Uh, I think that right there is what this ship needed. Um, I really didn't start off with the Borg set on this ship. I actually started off with the adaptive makeup because I was running. I was actually running two quantum torps up front, and I was getting the, the extra torpedo damage from the uh, adapted Mako set. But uh, if y'all would like, you can actually end up running um, two torps up here. The DPS is about the same. It really depends on how you fly, uh, but you're only going to be able to run one of these quantum torpedo launchers, so it just depends on how y'all want to go with it. But, uh, but when I did run two of them, I was actually running this one right here. I was actually running that quantum uh, torpedo launcher right there. So those were the two that I was running up front when I did run the two up front. Like I said, DPS was about the same. I didn't notice that big a difference between the two. I'm going to the warp core. We have the Elite Fleet reinforced warp core. It's the same one I've been running for a pretty good while now. And we also got the Borg Kinetic Cutting Beam. Devices, subspace field modulator, running some heavy phaser satellite turrets. Use those when we go do stuff like uh, no wind scenario, things like that. And auxiliary batteries. For my engineering consoles, the assimilated module, zero point energy conduit, the plasmodic leech, and the Tecchio Kinetic Converter. Uh, this is actually a new addition. I just got this <clears throat> about a week ago. Um, the When I say that the, the uh, Fleet Battle Cruiser is like an Escort, uh, it does not turn like an Escort, of course, but uh, that, that extra 22.9% flight turn rate um, helps out a lot. And then, of course, it adds the critical chance and the critical severity. So that kind of goes along with the 0 point energy conduit to add the 1.8 critical chance. Uh, of course, the leech is there for your power levels. Um, you can come down here to your power levels and adjust them down a little bit. See, like right now, my 
shield is at 9360. Um, once you get into combat, it pretty much maxes it out from there. Same thing with my weapons. It's right now at 125. Uh, with the leech, it adds a little bit of headroom on there to where when the beams hit, it doesn't drop it down very far at all. Science consoles running the emitter arrays. Mark 12, and it's the minus threat plasma ones. Um, these actually go in and uh, add the uh, plasma prop, the 2.5% chance to add 96 plasma damage per second, and they're really there for the 31.9% um, uh, plus 31.9 uh, starship shield emitters. Earlier tonight, I actually played around. That's why these are right here. As y'all know, on like my Defiant, my Vance Escort, I actually run these two field generators. Um, yes, it makes the hull. Uh, shields really really high if you actually come through and put two of the field generators in there you're talking almost almost 10,000 shields uh, but you're losing that shield heal and with that shield heal it makes a big difference but you're also losing that uh, the decrease in the threat generation too so things tend to come at you a little bit uh, I had did run it like this with one of each um, that seemed to work okay and I have also tried running the New Kara particle converter in there too. Um, it does add that extra uh, plus five to shield power setting, and then it adds a 10% accuracy for beam weapons. Uh, really up to y'all. I, I didn't notice much DPS difference between running the different things. Like I said, things are going to come after you a little bit more since uh, you're only running one of the minus threat reducing consoles. So down to the tactical consoles, running the uh, tactical phaser relays. Mark. 11. Alright guys, let's move on from there. Go to my captain skills real quick. Uh, these are the same captain skills as I've been running on all my builds. I haven't changed it and I honestly probably will never change this. So I'm just going to scroll through these real quick. Captain traits. Uh, as you can see, uh, there are no, probably any space traits left. Scroll down to those. I might end up doing a respec and pulling one of these other ones out. Um, this particle generator right here, flow capacitor and sensors, I'm mainly looking at this plus particle generators. Uh, let's see what it says. Particle generator plus 10 to particle generator. When I'm running my Vesta, um, that right there is going to help out with the gravity wells. Um, a couple of you guys that have been playing with me uh, know that Vesta is pretty, it's pretty nasty with the gravity wells and the ROM plasma. And then I also have these. Uh, graviton generators right here too so I might swap that out haven't really decided yet go ahead and go to bridge officers um, as you can see it's not auxiliary to battery it's pretty much just a standard uh, dragon type build I'm running two emergency power to weapons one and two emergency power to shields two Probably sometime after this video, um, I'm gonna be going into another ship. But um, before I give up this ship for right now, I'm probably gonna swap these around and see how it does. Um, you're probably gonna pick up a little bit more DPS, but it's, I would rather honestly have the shield heals. You can run those however you want. You can either run the shield here and the weapons there. But like I said, you may get a little bit more damage that way. But I prefer the the shield heals. Uh, so that way you can be flying around. You really don't have to worry about uh, really micromanaging your shields. You can pretty much just fly, blow stuff up, and roll on with your day. For the Lieutenant Commander Tactical, Tactical Team 1, Attack Pattern Beta 1, and Beam Fire Will 3, and then of course the Torp Spread. For my Commander Engineering and the this slot, I'm also I'm running the auxiliary power to structural integrity field. Um, this ability right here is key bound, so every time it comes available, it, it activates. So it's giving you that really nice hole heal, and it's also giving you the uh, damage resistance rating too. So that actually helps out a lot. Um, you can actually pull it off the key bind tray and stick it down here with like your hazard emitters. Um, I could actually put that right there, and you can use it with the auxiliary all the way up. It is a really strong heal. Uh, let's see, we can actually do that real quick and see what we look like on that heel. It is maxed out. You're looking at 7,000 
hit points right there off of a off that heal and with the hazard emitters you're looking at 18,000 so with those two heals so you're looking at 18 plus another might as well say another round it to 10 you're looking at 25 26,000 whole heal and if you come over here to the hole with hole right there you're looking at 56 so pretty much when you see this thing get down into the 20s um, you can eat, pop both of those and you're pretty much right back uh, from what I've noticed if I get way down here in the you know the 20s and the 30s usually if I pop a auxiliary battery hit the hazard emitters uh, depending on how the shields are I might hit the uh, transfer shield strength and pretty much that's enough to bring you all the way back up with this up in the tray cycling too you'll have your cooldown on your uh, auxiliary battery but uh, sometimes I do have that program so when I hit that it will actually pull it straight over so you can actually do it that way too if you get the bind and then like I said for the lieutenant science station I'm running the transfer shield strength one and hazard emitters too alright we'll go ahead and go to the duty officers real quick running three projectile weapons officers and two damage control engineers uh, honestly it's probably going to stay like that uh, what I might end up doing is dropping one of these uh, projectile weapons officers and adding the uh, con officer for my tactical team as most of y'all know when you go to <laughs> using tactical team if you're running uh, two of them there's going to be a global cooldown 15 seconds so if you're running one um, one con officer is going to reduce it by eight seconds. So if you do the math on it, you got a 30 second cooldown. One con officer would bring it down to 22, and then the second con officer would bring it down to 14. If my math is correct, so you're right there underneath that global cooldown for running two uh, tactical teams. So it really depends on how y'all how you want to run it. Um, I actually. And probably going to swap this out. I just like I said I haven't decided yet. I mean, it's running pretty good as it is right now, so I'm probably just going to leave it as it is. As you can see, remember uh, from my Defiant and my Advanced Escort video, um, this is pretty much the exact same uh, DOS right there. All right, go ahead and go to Reputation real quick. Uh, where I'm sitting right now, I am Task Force Omega, I'm Tier 5. Make a weapon proficiency. Make a weapon training. Regenerative shield augmentation. Make a graviton amplifier. And medical anti cloud. New care. I've come pretty good ways in this now. I'm about almost halfway through with tier 5. Uh, this right here actually made a big difference. I went with the auxiliary power configuration offense. Uh, that made a pretty good um, after I did this I started breaking some of my older DPS records uh, when we get over to talking about the parse log I'll explain that a little more but I went with the um, indomitable down here enhanced shield penetration um, this is probably going to get changed um, a 2.5 percent chance to uh, of your target shields will be with directed energy attacks in space combat um, I'm liking this a little more, the 5% hull. That's that's big, so I'm probably going to swap that out. Um, that right there is probably not going to make that big a difference in DPS, so I'm going to probably swap those out down to the fortified hull right there. But with the emergency fix, and then like I said, the auxiliary power configuration offense. New wrongness rep, uh, tier 5. Enhanced personal shields, precision, reactive shielding. Um, I was also thinking about this too. Probably not. I don't believe that one like it is. I think it was this one I was looking at earlier. Yeah, secondary shielding and sensor targeting assault. Um, I probably won't even go with that. I pretty much like pretty much how that's set up right there. Um, that might make a difference. I really like the 3% uh, critical hit chance. But then again too, if y'all want to go a little bit on the, you want to tank a little bit more, you might want to go with the 
shield systems. And then of course the quantum singularity manipulation. Alright, on Dyson, um, as it sits right now, I am <clears throat> starting tier 3 uh, choices so far. Went with the deadly aim for the 10% critical severity. And I also went with advanced targeting systems, 10% critical severity. And let's go to tier 3. Probably going to go with the active armor hardening. I'll probably go with the armor one on this one too. It looks a little better than the tactical advantage. And then of course I'll go with the defiance. Alright guys, talk about the uh, keybinds real quick. Uh, there's one thing I do want to note right here. As y'all can see that my keybinds have been swapped around. Um, I don't know what happened. Um, sometime after Season 8, this started activating backwards. I was in an STF one day playing like normal and my DPS was falling off and I couldn't figure out why and then I started really I come back to right where I'm pretty much where I'm sitting right now and just started playing with the space bar and watching how it activates. See how it activated from the right to the left. Before season 8 it was actually starting up here activating left to right. I don't know what happened. It's got to be a bug or something. So just for right now, I swapped everything around, and then I run them from right to left now. Uh, if y'all haven't noticed that, it, it does make a difference with your DPS and how things activate. So you might want to go ahead and swap those around. But uh, keybinds, like I said on my earlier videos, come from thehilbertguide.com. Same thing with the uh, my captain skills. All comes from the HilbertGuide.com. It's a great guide, uh, especially new people getting into just hitting level 50. You go in there at level 50 and set it up. Uh, you're going to notice a big difference in how how your ship runs if you go ahead and do that. Uh, as you can see, this is pretty much how I set my uh, trays up. I try to keep all my tactical stuff right here, uh, my batteries and such right here. I don't know what that's doing there. It's probably where I've swapped that beam around with that torp earlier. And on the bottom, I try to keep the uh, bus. I got my fireworks display there. And I've got my hazard emitters, transfer shield strength. Yeah, my re reverse shield polarity. It's all right there. I try to keep everything handy. Um, as y'all know from my escort videos, I love this assimilated tractor beam. We were actually playing a PvP match earlier today. And one of, the, one of these guys, I was hitting him pretty hard. And he got down and he was in an escort and tried to run. And he didn't get very far. So... I actually really enjoy that simulated tractor beam. It helps out a lot. All right, guys, getting here toward the end of the video. I'm talk about the parse log real quick. Uh, talk about what this ship can do. Um, for some reason in this ship, I don't know if it's just the way um, a lot of the pugs have been lately. Um, on my previous video with the advanced escort, I got pretty steady um, DPS numbers across the board. I can just about guarantee you I could call my DPS when I'd go into a pug, but I don't know if it's just a bad pug the past couple times I've been in. Um, when I first started, once this ship was built and I got into uh, really parsing it, uh, following the DPS in it, um, it was averaging somewhere around in 13k um, after I hit the tier 4 with the new Kara and added that thing that's when things got interesting and it started going up uh, I was averaging after that I was averaging in the right at 15 I actually broke my record uh, 13 right around almost 14 was my current was my record and then I started getting into the 15s and as I learned the ship and learned how, where everything was um, my actual top DPS for the ship was 16.6 .6. Um, I'll include that parse log and I'll also include another one that was about 13k uh, but from what I've seen with this ship, it averages 16 to the at the lowest I've seen was 11, and that was a terrible pug. I mean, it took like 10 minutes to finish. In fact, hit the conduit. I, I was at right, like I said, right at 11,000, and I think I don't think the next closest person to me was probably about 3,000. So it took forever to get it done. But on average, I probably see in the 13 to 15 range, depending on what kind of pug it is, if it's a fleet team, not a fleet team. Uh, if the fleet team gets in there, uh, it, it, it's going to be nasty, especially if everybody's stacking attack pattern betas, they're st using the tactical teams and things like that. It can, it, it, 
I'm just about positive it's going to break 16.6. Um, but like I said, so far right now the record 16.6. That's the highest DPS I've ever gotten out of any ship that I have. And like I said, it averages you know 13, 14, 15. That's the norm right there, depending on what kind of pug group and if you're running with a fleet team or not. All right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and finish this video up. There it is, the USS Vengeance. Overall impressions. Um, in the beginning, I thought this ship was pretty ugly, but as I've gotten it and started playing with it, um, I've actually really grown accustomed to it. I like it a lot. Um, like I said, as you can see, this is the fleet version of the ship. What I did was I went ahead and, and bought the Sea Store ship first, and then I actually had a fleet member throw me a fleet ship module, and I went ahead and got the uh, fleet battle cruiser for the discounted one fleet ship module. So I could get this, and I also, so that way I could have the uh, special console that comes with the Sea Store ship, which I believe I've got right here. That's going to be your Universal Variable Auto Targeting Armament. Um, in the very beginning, I played with it a little, little bit. Um, I liked it, and I didn't like it. Does it help DPS that much? No, because it's kind of a spike damage. So did I really notice a difference in adding DPS? N not really, but um, it's actually pretty cool to play with. Um, I'm a, I take it in a lot of times. I'll take it into like when we run like Tau Dua dailies. Um, I'll throw the cloak on there, throw that on there. It's just fun to get in there and just you know blow some stuff up with it. But for uh, overall, if y'all are seeking DPS, it's it's I didn't see where it made that big a difference in it. But as y'all can see, this is pretty much my standard build that I'm equipping to a lot of the ships, uh, whether it's auxiliary to battery or not. Which way do you go? I don't know. Um, here pretty much coming up soon um, next video I mean I'm gonna knock out the Galaxy X um, that's actually turned out to be a pretty fun ship it's running the close to the same build this is I don't have the torp on it right now um, doing some testing with it but instead of using the uh, damage reducing consoles I'm actually using the plus threat consoles I'm running two of them so hopefully uh, y'all enjoy that video I know there's been some fleet members asking for it so we can get that video done guys like I said if y'all ever have any questions concerns comments suggestions got a ship that you want me to review go ahead and drop me a note in game at Yadis Tafark at Yadis Tafark and I'll be more than happy to help you out in any way I can um, please bear with me like I said on the uh, last video as things are as I'm getting further and further in the game things are getting more and more expensive I'm actually having to start spending some uh, real money to get some of these ships so if y'all request a ship and it doesn't come right up please just be patient with me eventually I'll get to it I'm actually got a running list of uh, ships and builds that I want to do um, I'm probably going to work through all the Federation type ships first and then after that uh, probably move on to some of the more obscure ships maybe pick up some gem ships uh, things like that alright guys uh, one last thing I want to give a shout out to my fleet uh, we ran a fleet infected the conduit uh, back a couple days ago um, I was actually parsing this to see how it was going to do um, the team of uh, five people we had in our fleet um, nobody had less than 7,000 DPS and I want to congratulate all you guys I appreciate the support that y'all give me and uh, everybody's DPS is coming up and it's making things very interesting for the fleet so like I said y'all have a good evening any questions holler at me y'all start out